Um, gamers and listeners, are you there? Amy and I have stumbled upon this old castle and we seem to be, well, lost. This is the Mojo Gaming Podcast, and today we are talking about Haunting Ground for the PlayStation 2. Before we talk cheat codes, we have a listener who answered our latest question. This is what at Magalio Jen said was the strangest game she's played. Mr. Mosquito for the PlayStation 2. You play a mosquito whose goal is to annoy and ultimately suck the blood of some poor Japanese family. Yeah, that's a weird game. <laughs> I can definitely see why it's the strangest game that she's played. Um, I played around with this game a little bit. It's a weird one. Um, but, I mean, even just watching someone else play it, you're just like, why was this game made? But at the same time, you're like, wow, this is at the experimental age of the PlayStation 2 when all sorts of weird and new games were coming out, and we either loved them or we thought they were complete and utter garbage. So, yeah, this is definitely one of the stranger games for the PlayStation 2. (laughs) So let's talk cheat codes. First off, this game is pretty expensive. You're going to have to drop at least $100 if you want to purchase it online. And that's for the basic, like, disc only. I'm not talking, like, you know, the game and the, the case and the manual and all the fun stuff that you want as a collector to have with it. Thankfully, because we own video game stores, um, we have a warehouse where we just get fed, like, loads and loads of items. And we found it disc only in one of, the, one of our Gaylords that we got in. And thankfully had a case for it, and that's how we ended up getting it. So it's just, like happenstance and I'm so happy that we got it because it's a gem. It's one of those games that I played like six years, well actually played it way back when I was like 15 years old and I loved it and uh, played it like six years ago and now I'm happy to be able to revisit it. So let's talk cheat codes. Known in Japan as Demento, it's a survival horror video game developed and published by Capcom for the PlayStation 2 in 2005. This game shares many similarities with Capcom's earlier survival horror title, Clock Tower 3, and has been described as a spiritual successor to the Clock Tower series. The game's voyeuristic nature and the sexual objectification of Fiona were highlighted by critics as some of the game's best elements. They felt by exposing Fiona as a vulnerable object of desire, The game makes her, and therefore the player, feel more fragile and endangered, building a more disturbing atmosphere. Capcom began development knowing they wanted to make a survival horror game with a lead female character, believing that the female lead would not bode well with retailers and players alike, which is sad, considering. (laughs) They added a dog partner that could attack enemies. After this change, they further designed the gameplay around this partner mechanic. The cinematics were directed by actor and director Naoto Takanaka. He directly supervised the motion capture performances and used all of the characters, placing emphasis on dramatic performance. He took inspiration from universal monsters such as Frankenstein and Bela Lugosi's Dracula. I can see that. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Rather than streaming audio files, the music for Haunting Ground was generated by using PlayStation 2's built-in sounds. This way, the composer could easily change the tempo of the music during gameplay. That's awesome. Like, I don't know very many, like, games that were like, you know, let's just use the the actual music that the PlayStation 2 provides you, and then when we gotta change it up because, like, a, you know, a monster or something is there, it'll just be, like, a sudden burst. And I, yeah, I I was actually really excited to learn that fact because I was like, oh, this just adds, like, a whole new element to this game. Yeah, I had no idea. So let's discuss the game's story a little bit, Uh, and we're gonna talk about the point of the game how difficult it is, replayability, and different storylines. So, the story. Let's briefly talk about it. So, before we get into, like, the actual parts of the game that we wanted to talk about, um, the game is, uh, and this is going to be kind of hard to want to um, explain, because it's kind of one of those games you have to play. Otherwise, you really don't believe that it exists or it even happened. Like Um, a fever dream. Yeah, but basically, a woman wakes up, uh, in a cage <laughs> and is literally harassed by a bunch of enemies for like a good 10 hours straight while you play the game. Um, it sounds crazy, but it's pretty much true. She's literally just harassed and abused by all of these people who are chasing her. Um, yeah, and they want something inside of her, which we'll talk about later. And yeah, it's it's very creepy, uh, very dramatic, like they wanted it to be. And it's... One of those games that's going to stick with you forever. <laughs> For sure. 
So first of all, let's talk about the different difficulties you can choose from. So to begin with, you only get to choose normal. That's the only mode you got. After you beat it the first time, you can unlock hard mode. There's a couple different endings to the game. Um, so there is definitely replayability, um, but it's mostly just the same. It's There's only technically, I mean, there's four different endings. If you want to get very technical about it. Three of them are pretty much the same thing, and one of them's really different. And they just have, like, really tiny differences. Like, one of them's at night, and the other one, like, different characters who you didn't kill are still there. Yep, exactly. It's, yeah, it's not really... Yeah, and dramatic. then the fourth ending is just like, oh. Uh, yep. If you should just, I, I'm not, I'm gonna talk about it a little bit, but I'm not gonna go into much detail because it's something you should probably watch. It's not gonna make any sense if you've never played the game before, but you should definitely watch it. When you start the game, you start out as this young um, English uh, yeah. teenager um, named Fiona, yeah. and um, well, she's not a teenager; she's like a young early twenties, I would say. Yeah. Um, she uh, wakes up in a cage in kind of a sewer dungeon, and uh, there's this creepy dude, like, just staring you down, and um, you remember vaguely being in a car accident, but there's pieces of meat everywhere, so there's not really much else to think about, just, like, there's meat everywhere, <laughs> and uh, um, you're released from the cage, and you're only wearing a sheet, and you're just like, what is this dude doing with all this meat? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you're nude. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you have the sheet on, but you actually like her. You wake up nude it's in a cage. It's very beautiful and creepy. Like, just from the very start. Yeah, it is. And uh, I didn't think that you could wake up in a cell in a dungeon and still make it, like, like the most beautifully haunting thing I may have ever haunting. seen in a video game. Video game. In a video game. A video, a video game. game. Um, so you leave the cage, and a dog jumps on you, and he just runs off. But you find his collar, and it says Huey, so... Can I mention that his name is, like, it's spelled weird. Like, you think Huey is, like, Huey, but it's H-E-W-I-E? -E. Yeah. Not, not what I was expecting, but yeah. yeah. But, I mean, I think that's the same spelling for, um, the three ducks, right? Huey, Louie, and... Whatever the last one is. Huey, Dewey, and Louie. Yes. <laughs> Huey, I, Dewey, and whatever his last name is. I always pictured it as H-U-E-Y. Like Huey. Oh, maybe that is how you spell it. Yeah, you're, maybe you're right. I watch DuckTales. <laughs> I know what I'm talking about. No, I, I already forgot DuckTales. Wow, I feel bad. <laughs> it's but, okay. But yeah, yeah, he, it is spelt a little differently, but uh, it, it it definitely looks like Huey, so I guess I can't really complain, but I was not expecting that either. No, it's okay. I just kept misspelling it while we were taking notes. But yeah. So, like, as Fiona leaves the dungeon sewer area, the slow, sexy music plays as you leave the dungeon, and I could not find it for the life of me, otherwise I would show you. But it's just like, she's like walking up the stairs, it's like... Yep. And you're just like, uh... You're just like, dang! Yeah, I'm just like, wow, you, you work it, Fiona. Mm -hmm. You and your sheet. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so the castle courtyard, this is where the dungeon leads up to. It's pretty spooky and pretty foggy, but it's literally just outdoors, and you definitely tell that there's like a gigantic castle that rests upon where you are. Um, so then you go into the castle, and the first thing that happens is a maid comes into the room. She's very cold and distant, and she's just like, wear these clothes, and you're just like, okay. Um, so then, of course, they have the obligatory sexy clothing change scene. So she, like, strips off of her... She just, like, throws her sheet across the room and it's just like, I'm coming out! I'm coming! <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, as you're changing, they have to also have the obligatory someone's watching you through the eye holes of a painting while you're getting undressed. Hmm. It's very unsettling, and they're like... <laughs> Yeah, I it's forgot. So gross. I, yeah, I I blocked that out because it was so <laughs> weird. Yep. Uh, another thing I appreciated, and I know you appreciated, was how the doors work because you can leave them open and you don't have to like if you're running away from somebody you don't have to like here let me open this door. Uh you know. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean that's the doors. As weird as it sounds, is one of my favorite part of the game and parts of the game. And you're gonna be like, what? What does a door have to do with the game? But like. 
in games where you just run away from bad guys and there's no, like, actual fighting mechanic, um, having a door open and not having to, like, load every time you go through a door, like in Resident Evil, of the original Resident Evils, I should say, is, like, amazing. Like, every time you open a door in Resident Evil, it shows you opening the door, and then you go in the next door, and then you go in and the next door. And then you take, like, three But this, you just steps. open the door, and you and you can leave it open, and it's really cool, because when you go through the door, or when someone else goes through the door, it, like, you fade in and you fade out of the room. It's really cool. It was very clever. Like, the, ha- like, the doors are always black. You can't tell what's in front of you like an actual door would be. But at least there's, like, some, it's like, smooth fluidity to it. Um, that also, like, like Bounty just said, when you are getting chased, it is so amazing to have a door open that you don't have to worry about opening every time. And you can also close a door so that, like, you know, if uh, someone's coming after you, it buys you a little bit of time, too. Okay, so originally we were going to play Remothered. There you go. Um, it wasn't good. <laughs> I didn't even, I mean, I, I could probably actually finish it if I made myself. And I might, actually, at some point. Um, I bought it at, like, the Halloween sale. It was, like, half off. And I'm like, oh, my God, it's a spiritual successor to Clock Tower. You got me. So I paid the 15 bucks for it, and it's just... Yeah. So. This ge- Haunting Grounds did it. Haunting Ground did it so much better. I always want to call it Grounds. Haunting Ground did it so much better. So I have to talk about this, and I mean we're gonna kind of like, I mean not exactly like compare them, but just kind of talk about like what they did that they could have done that would have made them more like Clock Tower and less like whatever they were going for. Don't be wrong, it had, like, the creepiness that you want from a game, but it didn't have, like, the character was incredibly slow, the bad guy wasn't scary, I mean, don't get me wrong, it's always creepy when someone's, like, taunting you and, like, trying to come after you, but, like, when he's just waiting around for you because he knows you're there, it's just not spooky anymore. Uh, we'll talk about the different ways this game actually makes it scary. It, I mean, if a character just waited around for you, it wouldn't be scary, it's the surprise element that makes it scary sorry so anyway let's get let's keep going so obviously the graphics and the cinematics to begin with are pretty awesome oh uh the save points are at clocks um anything creepy makes you panic like um it basically just kind of makes everything slow motion and like really pixelated because you're like tripping out because you're scared yeah it gets very like black and white like you lose all the colors yeah so it's really hard to maneuver um, and of course, you find that out because the ogre man is starts chasing you, the yeah. one from the meat room. <laughs> yeah, he's like my darling. Yeah, that's all he says. Yeah, he yeah yeah. So like once again, there's only one way really to battle um, it these bad guys that come after you, and that's to run away and hide. You don't really have a whole lot of chances. I mean, you can actually beat them up until they, like, pass out, but they'll come back. It's not like one of those things where, like, you can kill them. You know, you literally have, like, a showdown at the end of their, like, um, part of the game, and then they're finally done with you. So you don't have very many chances to fight. So, (laughs) at one point in the game, we find this really weird Charlie Brown the ghost in a on a couch. It's just like sitting there. We're just like, is this Charlie Brown? Um, and then like you you was examine it, and someone tells you you're going to be like their vessel because they want to knock you up. It's really weird. Um, and you're just like, it's just really creepy because you're just like in this room with nothing but a couch and this like Charlie Brown ghost, and it's like you're going to be just like that thing on the couch, and you're just like, what is dun, it? Dun, dun. And then you take the sheet off of it, and you, you it reveals a pregnant statue, and you're just like, ugh, pregnant yeah, I, I can I can see where this is going. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, you're wrong. Fiona's really, really pretty. She's a really pretty character, and like it just feels like everybody lusts after her beauty the entire time. It really is. Like it's really terrible. So they introduced luminescence, which are basically if you took. Navi and you made him really annoying <laughs> and he doesn't they don't talk they just kind of like the little blue wisps that just kind of like fly through the air and then they just they literally target you they're not very fast so you can outrun them but they will literally continuously target you so if you leave doors open they'll come through doors to find you so you run in- oh, what was that go ahead no they're mostly just designed to piss you off because like if they hate you you panic um, you run into the ogre again, and you find out that his name is Debilitus, uh, from this 
dude named Ricardo, and he's the one the the one who wants to pregnant you. <laughs> um, he's got a very sexy English accent, but not a very sexy face. You f- see that later. Yeah, he's um, actually got a really hot accent. I was like, whoa, yeah. Ricardo. But then you see him, and you're just like, ugh, catfished. <laughs> yeah. um, you pass out when he explains that your family died in a car accident, and you are the heir to the Castle Belly. Yes, it's a very weird last name. It's Italian, I assume. Latin, maybe? Latin, the whole yeah, thing. yeah. Yeah. Italian is Latin based. Oh, that makes sense. So, you wake up after passing out in the same room you changed in. Uh, you hear a dog whining, and you go back into the courtyard that you originally started in, and you see a dog attached to a tree with wire. You free the dog, and he runs off. He's just like, thanks, bye. Bye. You return to your room and Debilitus is just sitting on your bed waiting for you. <laughs> and you're just like, great. Aww. Huey comes to your rescue and you find out how to use him to your advantage. So how the dog commands work. They're actually pretty simple. Um, th- the problem that I had, um, well, they're just, they're just they're pretty simple. Um, you can tell him to attack. Um, you can call him to your side, you can tell him to stay or sit, and you can call him a bad dog or you can call him a good dog, and yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. I mean, you pretty much use every one of those commands, although I try not to say bad dog because it makes him sad, and he goes, ooh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it is kind of a choose your own adventure thing with Huey, yeah. I will say. And like, the best part is that he attacks people. Like, you wouldn't be able to hide and get away from most of the bad guys if he didn't. Oh, yeah. Remember that creepy maid? You um, pass her again in the hallway. Uh, well, not the hallway. The kitchen while she's cooking. And there's a hair in her soup. And um, Amethyst actually told me that she, like, researched about this part and it's really creepy. So I'm going to let you talk about it. Oh, yeah. I was looking at the wiki article specifically about the maid because she's probably the, one of the most interesting characters in the game. Um, but... There's a hair in her soup, and people claim that there's, like, because it's like a blonde hair, just like um, Fiona's. So we thought, oh, maybe she, like, has been taking hair from her. But when I read this article, it said that her mother was a blonde as well, and we're pretty sure that she feeds her her own parents yep. at some point. It's messed up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I mean, I mean, what way, What better way? And I wonder if that meat that he was co- he was chopping up in the beginning was them. Full circle. Oh my god. This uh, is disturbing uh. already. <laughs> but anyway, okay. So the phone rings and you answer. Uh, you get to this, like, yeah, this, this part of the, the giant castle. The phone rings, you answer it. An old man named Lorenzo says to be wary of Ricardo as if you weren't wary already considering he wants to pregnant you. Mm-hmm. Um, he mentions something about Azov. At this point, we're just like, whatever, dude. And then Depilitus, of course, shows up to scare you away because anytime you progress anywhere in the story, you get completely screwed by some bad guy coming after you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so this next part. Okay, so I didn't actually... Um, I actually, like, Googled this because there's this part in the game where you go down this hallway and all you hear is this weird slapping sound. And you're and just I was like, like, what is going on in this hallway? Mm-hmm. And apparently, like, if you click on a, do- a specific door in this hallway, you actually see a scene of Ricardo slapping the maid. And, like, she looks at you and it's really creepy. But I never did it. And I felt kind of dumb that I didn't because I would have loved to see, like, the cutscene. But I was just, like, every time I went in this hallway, I'm just like... Who the hell is slapping yep. in here? They're like, slap, <laughs> slap, slap, clap, clap, clap. clap. Uh, uh, it's delightful. <laughs> uh, but um, on your way out of that hallway, and you're just like, what did I just... What did I just... <laughs> <laughs> on your way out, you notice this perfect hole in the wall. And... Uh, it turns out it's the alchemy hole, which, like, sounds like a weird name for, like, a medieval bar. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't know. The alchemist hole. Yeah. <laughs> but you crawl through it, and it's, like, just this little, like, side room where you can, like, make stuff using alchemy, which is, like, a big part of the game. And you use medallions that you find to craft different things, and they're uh, white, red, green, and blue. And it's very... Uh, weird. Yeah, the different items are color coded, which is strange, but at the same time, like, depending on what color you make whilst you're doing your medallion converting, um, it could be like a health item or a, um, 
Uh, there's like items you can use to detour, d- deter, sorry, deter bad guys um, and make them like leave you alone. And then you can also do like get items for Huey to eat. And then you just get random things that you're just like, what is it? And you try it. And I don't know if it kills you or not. I actually didn't do, I didn't mess around with the items uh, that much, especially the ones that I didn't know what they were because I was like, I don't want to die. <laughs> So you get separated from Huey when uh, part of the castle pa- falls apart, and then Debilitus hears that you fell, and he chases you around without your Huey. So you have to find him, and it's not that hard. Um, you just kind of gotta like work your way back around to the castle and find a door that connects from this new part of the castle to the old part that you were just in. So you find Debilitus' shack, and it's just as weird and creepy as he is. <laughs> it really is. It's like Debilitus really reminds me of. A friend. <laughs> we'll just say a, a friend. You know who you are. <laughs> He's very like he he literally looks like um I mean Frankenstein in a weird way or like Quasimodo like people clean, have a said cleaned up yeah Quasimodo there people you go. have said Quasimodo um I mean Frankenstein in stature because he kind of like runs like a giant like tool <laughs> like someone else I know. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway. But yeah, there's a lot of puzzles in this game. Um, there's a block puzzle, you put blocks together. Yeah, it's, it's actually, stuff. I think it's the first puzzle you come across. Mm. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's there's a lot of them. And they usually unlock stuff, like the uh, like a secret floor staircase. Yeah. And um, there's a light refractor puzzle that opens up the door to the altar room. Yes. woo <laughs> So, you get to the altar room, which is basically, like, this really weird church that they had hiding in this, like, puzzle, which is just, like, there's no way that these people could possibly believe in a god. <laughs> there's no way. <laughs> so, you examine the altar, and Debilitus enters the room, and he locks the door. He literally just, like, comes in, and he's like, ha, 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 and <laughs> just then Doesn't change his expression. He's just like, uh, a little private time. Lovely. Yeah, he locks, the, he locks everyone in the room, and it's your first boss battle. So, there's, like, a huge chandelier, of course, on the top of the ceiling, and there are some restraints that are holding. There are two different restraints, and you can either kick the crap out of them to make them drop... Or you could actually have Debilitus do it for you, or you can just kill Debilitus. Like, you don't have to, like, you know... Spare him? Yeah, you don't have to spare him. It's kind of cool that there's a couple different ways that you can actually beat him up. I chose to just break the restraints and have the chandelier fall on top of him. Um, Which is, it's funny how you can make him do it yourself if he comes after you and he, like, tries to hit you with a punch or, like, throw his arm at you, which he normally does. If you, like dodge out of the way before he does that he'll hit the actual restraint and he'll break it in one hit it's pretty crazy but he's a pretty strong dude so it makes sense um but anyway at the end um he debilitates after you crush him under the chandelier he's not dead um he he gets back up and he bows and he's not gonna haunt you anymore and fiona actually feels kind of bad she's like i feel bad for treating him like a scary monster when he's more just like a simple child Um, oh, we never played Debilitus's music. So every one of the bad guys that you encounter in this game, uh, well, the main bad guys, I should say, they all have their own music. I want to play Debilitus music for you real quick because everyone has their own music and it's actually really cool how different they are and how they make you feel because this is literally chase music every time they're in the room. pretty like standard horror fair. But yeah. It's very like it almost reminds me of like a clock getting wound up. It's so weird. Cause I it like winds that. down and then winds back up. Anyway, it's really cool. <laughs> you go you go sorry. You go to open the door to the next area and Daniela, the maid Hugs you from behind and very coldly tells you it's time for dinner. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she's, mm-hmm. yeah. She's very, very close. She's very close. She's just like, she's basically like cupping you. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. 
So, okay, you're in the dining room, and there's, like, ten bowls of soup on the table. <laughs> and like I said before, we're pretty sure that's her mom, so maybe she fit in a ten bowls of soup. Mom soup, my favorite. Daniela explains that her creator made her the perfect woman, but she is not complete. She can't feel pain, pleasure, or get pregnant. That's a pretty big theme in this game for some reason. Everybody wants to get pregnant. Like in most horror movies. So, when I read the Wikipedia article, I was a little upset because a lot of people were like, okay... Because she said her creator, that would ass- that would make you assume she was a homunculus, which is an alchemical... It was basically a, a person made from alchemy. They're not, like, a human. They're just, like, kind of a robot in a person shell. It's kind of literally what they are. They are. They're, like, cold and unfeeling. And so they- a science zombie. A science zombie. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. And, um... <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, she's it's she's a homunculus and people are like oh she's not a homunculus she definitely was kidnapped as a child and brought to the castle and raised there and I'm just like no 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 she's definitely homunculus like don't get me wrong like there are totally a bunch of different like mental problems she could have that would definitely make her think that she was created but it, the fact that, like there's just so many different things that point this character into being a homunculus and I'm just gonna say she's a dang homunculus because that's what I think she is <laughs> So after eating her soup, you asked to be excused and... <laughs> what? Nothing, nothing. Mom soup. That's all I got. Yeah. Mom soup. It's so gross. after eating mom soup, you asked to be excused and you feel disgusting, so you go upstairs to lie down. Like, your character is actually like, ugh, I don't feel good. So you're, you're laying upstairs and, like, your character is sleeping. Fiona is sleeping. And Daniela starts to feel you up. She's just, she, like, starts on your chest and, like, works her way down. And then she literally, like, grabs your stomach and it wakes you up. Um, and obviously your character starts freaking out. Um, or not your character. Well, your character gets startled. But Daniela starts freaking out, saying she's not complete. And she starts smashing her head against the mirror and breaks it. Nothing zombie about no, that. No, no. And then she takes a piece of glass and comes after you with it. And let's play um, Daniela's like, music. Because this is where Daniela starts chasing you. Because it's literally one after the other. As soon as you beat one of them, they're all... They all, like, come after you. It's it, She's probably the creepiest in this game. There are some other ones that are pretty close, but she is by far the creepiest. Her music just screams that there's something not right. <laughs> it almost literally screams. Yeah, it <laughs> feels like it is screaming. Yeah, she's very creepy. Um... But she's also a good maid, because she doesn't let um, her feelings towards you interfere her, like, maid duties. Like, she'll ju- you'll walk by and you'll be like, ah, oh, it's Daniela. But she's just dusting. And, <laughs> she- and that's what makes this game so creepy. Yep, yeah, and she'll- you walk up to her and she's like, dinner will be ready tomorrow or something. You yeah. know what I mean? And it's like, yeah. Yeah. She's just, she's, she's a good maid. Yeah, it's so weird to, to, like, one minute walk into a room and she's just like chilling and then the next moment be running from her because she's trying to stab you with it a piece of glass. It makes her seem even more like psychotic. Yeah. Which is awesome. Exactly. So okay so the next part you trip in front of a mirror and find out you can use them as a distraction. It, they're like her weakness. So like it, it, when she looks into a mirror she like freaks out and she has the most insane laughter and like her Scream head laugh. spasms and like her whole like uncontrollable nature is like fascinating. Mm-hmm. So, you're going to this new area, um, and you're kind of locked into it because water comes pouring in from the ceiling and pretty much, like, literally fills this entire room. So you're locked in this new area. And this part of the castle reminds you of a sewer. It's very old and weird. It's very, very weird. Yeah. And, um, like, while you're walking through the castle, there's a lot of, like, classic, like, horror, um, like, tropes. You just walk by and there's a dead guy on the couch. You're just like, sup? (laughs) Um, you use those little Navi, uh... Those little luminescence, yeah. The blue guys, to light your way to new areas. And, I mean, there's a carousel room that's just playing, like, garbled, um, carnival music. Yeah, it's just, it's so creepy. Yep, and just, like, random dolls just, like... Staring you down around like, every corner, and it's literally, just like, Hi. and they're all like Daniela's height. So you go around the corner and you're like, "Oh shit!" Mm-hmm. And then you're just like, "Never mind, it's just a doll. I feel like a fool." Yep. <laughs> 
So uh, the next part of the game, you have to create fire using elements. And the choices that we found out of this crossword puzzle was salt, mercury, cadmium, and fadu. Because <laughs> it was a crossword. And, yeah. <laughs> fadu seemed like it was actually a, an element. My favorite element, fadu. <laughs> <laughs> but actually salt, mercury, and cadmium were the ones that we had to use. And we literally had to place them in like dragon statues and mouth. And one of them is just like really, really high up. So you give it to Huey and he like air Jordans it into the dragon's mouth. It literally, he literally like jumps on top of one of the other dragon statues and then just like Whoa, and like whips, he whips it right into that last dragon's mouth. And the fire in the room, because there's like this giant beam of fire, it turns into like this ice path that you can climb. It's really pretty because they really thought about all the different like stuff that they could add into it to make it more atmospheric. And like the ice is actually like, um, it's like uh, the condensation. It's actually like condensating and it's glowing and it's pretty. And it's just like the small pieces of beauty in this game. It, they really stand out. Like I noticed at one point, like you're in a hallway. It's the drabest, bleakest hallway falling apart. But on a table, there's like a flower and it's pink. And it's like the only thing I can focus on in the room because of how like pretty it is compared to the rest of the room. You discover the area you're in is underwater. <laughs> um, you see a giant fish swim past your window, and then Dan's like, Daniela is like, hello! And it's really funny, we you. gave every bad guy their own, like... <laughs> Moniker? <laughs> yeah, like, Debilitus was Deb, Daniela is Dan, and, and Rick so Ricardo was Rick, yep. and so on and so forth. We'll keep telling you these really cool nicknames we come up with them as we go. <laughs> Lorenzo's is great. <laughs> um, so, the Jupiter Room puzzle. So... It, okay, I did the. Okay, so there's a couple different ways you can do the Jupiter room. So you can actually ignore Daniel in this room, but I was stupid. I decided you know, I was, every time that I replayed this part, I was stupid. I was like, hey, Daniela, how's it going? And then she starts coming after you with a much, like, a, an actual, a worse, like, thing. It's actually a fire poker, and it's actually, a, like, a heavier attack than the glass shard was. So I kind of screwed myself at that point, because she starts coming after you with a fire poker instead. But anyway, in this room, you have to find the differences in both rooms. And if you guess the wrong item in these rooms, you get eaten alive by bugs. Um, the changes in the, 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 this changes the area around you. So basically, like, you actually, like, when you figure out the right items, it changes you almost, like, to a whole different, like, level. So you can find more rooms, basically. Um, the crypt area is very interesting because you have to examine this crypt and a hand appears from inside the crypt and starts like, waving. Hello. Yeah, it's like, give me my filet of fish Give me that fish. <laughs> <laughs> and it wants something. The hand wants something. Obviously. And, uh, yeah, and of course the carousel room, now that you changed everything, is much bloodier and creepier. The music has gotten a lot, like, slower and danker. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of dank, Danielle is randomly, like, Hey, you stink. Here's some perfume. Yeah, it's like, really weird. She, she doesn't actually say that. Well, she's she just, like, you don't smell very ladylike. Here's some perfume that the master likes. It's something like that. It's just a very obscure way to start off a side quest. But, yeah, yeah. So then you find the torture room, of course, of course, and the torture room. Mm, oh, <laughs> there's a corpse on a chair, and you try to take the key on his neck. But we all know how it works when you try to take any corpse's key. He's like, nope, and he like hugs you, and you have to like get him off of you, and you find out that he's possessed, and you have to exercise. <laughs> I wrote actual exercise. <laughs> <laughs> Not like X or size. Like, let's do it. Let's get fit, everyone. He's got to work Exercise. out. He's like, I work out. <laughs> I lift. Do you even lift, bro? Yeah, you could tell he lifts because he won't let you the hell go. <laughs> but anyway, um, you have to exercise the corpse by lighting these candles. And it's actually like the partner dynamic they were talking about. <laughs> Huey and Fiona do it together. And they, uh, um... Yeah, basically you just, like, have to step on... There's a lot of stepping on tiles. Like, I don't know how, really, other than stepping on tiles, you could do the whole partner dynamic. But yeah, it's just stepping on tiles to make the candles light up. He gets exercise from the candles, I guess. <laughs> and you can finally take his key. Um, so in the garden, that apparently is Daniela's pride and joy. This is, like, her favorite room. Is It's the garden. You find the screaming mandrakes, and they sound freaking horrible. Like, and yeah. then... Uh, yeah, they're horrible. So, um, you use the perfume that Daniela gave you. You actually, sh like, let Huey sniff it so that he can tell you which mandrake that you need. 
Um, their scream makes you panic, and Daniela comes as soon as you pick one up. So not only do you have Daniela running after you, you can't hide with a mandrake in your hand, but you also have that stupid thing freaking crying the whole time. Oh my gosh, it's terrible. Mm -hmm. So you actually give it to that hand in the crypt, and it eats it and it lets you inside. And the game kind of explains that the mandrake is like a hybrid plant human, so it can be used for alchemy. So it's like a human, it's like a plant, but with blood. Yep. And like, yeah, it's so creepy when you think of it. It's been a while since I read Harry Potter, but they explain it's pretty much the same. In, uh, in, yeah, they're like plant babies. Uh, yeah. Thinking about like eating and like biting into like any kind of like apple or like a potato and there's blood just, just makes like me a nose. so freaked out. <laughs> <laughs> a nose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that is terrifying. Um, it's probably why they... Used it in this game. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, you go inside the crypt, and um, you don't find out who belonged to that hand, but it, <laughs> maybe it was just a hand in a void. <laughs> but anyway, you enter the crypt, and um, there's just, there's a golem hanging out down there, and his name is Meth. <laughs> um, my best friend, Meth. <laughs> hey, kitties, you want to hang out with the golem? His name's Meth. <laughs> <laughs> his name's Meth. <laughs> <laughs> Clever. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> um anyway, you get Meth, the wonderful kitten loving golem, to show you how to get to the next area. He um basically just puts out these like walls of fire by like stomping all over them. Um But yeah, you find the incinerator and Fiona mentions that there are remains in there that look like a child. Yeah. <laughs> and then you wonder, what the heck Daniela does in her free time? <laughs> Wait, when does she have time to find children to Try burn? some of the mince pie, mistress. <laughs> it's delicious. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. Uh, yeah, the impossible stairs room. I vaguely remember this part. Um, it's like that um, part in Labyrinth with all the different yeah. stairs. Yeah. And they're just, like, stairs on the wall, stairs on the floor, stairs on stairs. It's, like, it's It reminds weird. me of the family guy joke where he's, like, uh, walking up the stairs, walking down the stairs, walking up the sideways stairs. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, then... There's also this just random her homunculus just in the corner, like... <laughs> this is kind of where you get, like, you start kind of learning about homunculuses. Like, homunculi? Homunculi. Homunculi. This is where they start kind of showing up. And these are basically homunculi that didn't make the cut and didn't have their own personalities. There's, just like, like, something wrong with them. Yeah, they're just, like, mumbling and, like, holding themselves and doing, like, one action over and over again. Mm-hmm. And then you also learn about... Football babies. <laughs> Football babies. <laughs> That's what I called them before we found out what their name was. <laughs> They're considered failures, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Mm -hmm. um, so you drain the water from that one room we were talking about, and then you have to go and do another puzzle in the archer room. I call it the archer room because basically what it is, is it's like a big like tile hallway, and at the end there's a, a, a one big statue, and it's an archer. And you have to send Huey to show you how to do, how to get through this without stepping on the wrong bricks or blocks or tiles or whatever. Because if you step on the wrong tile, he starts aiming at you and after three tries, he will kill you <laughs> with his arrow. And it's automatic game over because nobody can touch precious Fiona. Mm -hmm. So anyway, you have to follow tightly to that dog's butt and <laughs> get the other way. And then you actually can... You actually can disarm <laughs> the statue, thankfully, when you get to the other side. Um, so he, now we're in the mirror room. This is my favorite part. Yes, this is one of the best parts of the entire game. So we're in the mirror room, and Daniela comes in after you and calls you a princess, and how you are so precious, precious princess, and how much she hates you. How dare you be human and perfect, huh? And I don't have a pleasure in me. That's not really what she yeah. sounds like. So she she freaks the heck out. She cries blood. She's pretty much like a spoiled brat. She just doesn't know it because she doesn't know what a spoiled brat is. And then it's your boss battle. 
Um, so what you have to do, and it sounds really simple, actually isn't a terribly hard battle, um, but you have to move these blocks into the middle of the room to create a prism and get her to follow you into the middle, like, mirror piece. And it's not hard, it's just, like, a lot of, like, telling Huey to attack her. Um, thankfully she's not, like, really, like, powerful. Um, and, like, she, she's really fast, but she's not super powerful, which is nice. Yep. Um, so, yeah, I just kept, you know, having her, him attack her, and then we, I moved the pieces, and then, you know, made her go into the, the middle of Makes, that. like, a light trap that yeah. surrounds her. And then you, yep, you, you get her into that middle piece, and then the glass dome above her breaks from her, because she screams, and she's literally impaled where she stands. It's one of the most beautiful things that I've ever seen happen in a video game. For like, yeah, because like for like two seconds before she died, she was just kind of like looking at the glass, like the ah. glass literally looks like snow when it's yeah. falling from the ceiling. And she's it's just pretty like, and she's happy, twirling around. Yeah, and like when she actually gets speared by that. Um, piece of glass. She actually like smiles, and it's weird. It's like she's finally happy now that she's. I don't know if she's, she's complete. Actually, mm-hmm. I don't know if she's dead, but she's finally happy. <laughs> I don't have to dust anymore. I just have to stare up at the stars. Yeah, yeah, that could definitely be why. You never know. She's like, this is I'd my be happy. life now. I'd, yeah, <laughs> I, I'd be happy for sure if I was her. Um, but yeah, you you leave her there. <laughs> and yeah, um, you leave her there. And uh, on your way, like to the next area, you find a giant incubator that has a pregnant woman inside of it, mm-hmm. and that's where you meet Ricardo. <laughs> Ricardo. Mm. He <laughs> he asks you to stay, um, because he wants your Azoth, which you still don't really know what what the heck that is or why he wants it. Yeah, and you're like hell no. So then he pulls out a gun and is like. You're staying. <laughs> He's like, much. so I pull out my gun, and I swear I'm gonna shoot someone. <laughs> <laughs> Just like trapped in the closet with R. Kelly. <laughs> That's mm-hmm. literally what mm-hmm. it feels mm-hmm. like. Mm-hmm. So, what you have to do to get past Ricardo is you have to make a godstone to open the front door of the castle, and you're like, woohoo! The front door of the castle! That means I can leave, right? Nope! <laughs> <laughs> so, you find a lot of homunculi, homunculi mumbling, <laughs> eating, and licking things from the ground. And it kind of sucks. This part specifically sucks because Huey growls at the homunculi, which he also growls when there's a bad guy coming. So it's like, it's almost like it's playing with your head. Because it's like, oh man, is it Ricardo and his gun? Or is it just a homunculi that... Homunculi don't really do anything to you. They just exist. <laughs> Make you feel uncomfortable. So then you find out later on in the game that the Azoth is apparently greater than the Godstone, and Fiona is an Azoth. Mm Mm-hmm. Now, we don't really know what the difference between a Godstone and an Azoth is. All we know is that one is greater than the other. You know, to me, it seems like it's kind of like, um, like the ultimate alchemy thing. Mm -hmm. Sort of like like the blue eyes dragon. Like the Sorcerer's Stone in Harry Potter. True, or like in <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh, like the Blue Eyes Dragon. Isn't no, that yeah. the most like, yeah? It was. I, I doubt it's probably that anymore. But when I was a kid, that was like the holy of monsters, kind of like a Mewtwo or a Charizard. Exactly. So <laughs> yeah, I guess I don't know. That's how I saw it. <laughs> in one of the rooms, you find Prima Materia to craft into a Godstone, and you actually have to use. There's a bunch of different rooms, and they both have. They all have like a, at least one that has an extractor, a decomposer, and a synthesizer. So it's literally running from room to room to like make this godstone out of this prima materia. Mm-hmm. So then you use the godstone on a statue with um, scales, and you balance the scales, and it opens the front door, and you can finally leave. I swear to God, this house. If anybody tried to sell me this castle, I would be like. Why do you need that to open the front door? Where can I get a godstone? And why do I have to make one? Like, there would be so many questions if someone wanted to buy this castle. <laughs> also, just kidding. You can't actually leave. <laughs> yeah, like, because there's a forest, like, right out of that door. Yep. So Huey hears a noise. And, like, as soon as you get into the forest, Huey hears a noise. And he runs off. And then shortly after that, you hear a gunshot and him crying. And now you're all alone. <laughs> Um, so you have to find Huey, and you find him underneath a tree, and he got shot in the leg. Poor Huey. Um, so you bandage up his leg, and if you do not find Huey, you get the bad ending. And I'm just gonna explain a little bit of the bad ending. You wake up in, like, a big blue prism. It's like a big blue box, basically. And you're just like, where am I? And Ricardo's like, ha, la, 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 la. <laughs> And yeah, that's the end. 
<laughs> I'm just kidding. You become obviously really pregnant. Seriously, I'm not lying. Look he up said the bad he was going to pregnant you. Yeah, you wake up and you're very pregnant. Believe me, check out the ending. Bad ending clock, or not clock door. Bad, <laughs> bad ending haunting ground. Just look it up. Ricardo decides to show up at this moment, this exact moment, and chases you to a cliff edge. Um, he proceeds to tell you that your Azoth belongs to him, and he reveals his face, and it looks like somebody, it looks like, like a cracked, like, like his face is made of porcelain and somebody just punched him in the face. <laughs> it looks like someone carved his face <laughs> out of clay. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you find out that other than that, it looks pretty much exactly like your father, Ugo, and you find out that they were clones, and you're like, my life was a lie. Um... But now that Ugo, your dad, is dead, um, Ricardo is the original, and he killed your parents just so that he could say that. And after finding all of that out, you just pass out. <laughs> and since I decided I'm going to do the good ending, Fiona wakes up from Huey licking her awake in her cell, and Huey is such a good boy. Like, he is the best boy. He really is. So, um, yeah, so it basically, if he doesn't lick you and wake you up... Ricardo takes your butt. Yeah, you get the disturbing bad ending. So your clothes are very different now that you're in the cell. Um, your hair is down and you're wearing a hospital gown and you have no shoes. <gasps> no shoes. Which, if it were me, I would be very uncomfortable. I'd be like, where are my shoes? No Can shoes? I at least have slippers? <laughs> <laughs> are those like stupid like paper booties they make I'm you weird. Wear? I can't walk somewhere I don't know without shoes on. Uh-huh. Especially like, barefoot. She's it's not like she has socks on. Socks I could probably deal, but like no shoes or anything. I'd be like ice cold. Like she's wearing nothing throughout half this game. The I'd only... be so cold. <laughs> nah. The only time I like to go barefoot is when it's like really warm outside. Yeah. Then I don't mind going down like a sidewalk. It's really nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so when you wake up in your cell, you get a note from Lorenzo that says you're in a water tower. Huey helps you escape your cell, and uh, basically all you have to do is be like, Huey, grab the keys that are, of course, directly across from you in the cell. And weirdly enough, you still have all of your items. I found that part incredibly weird. Like, you'd think if someone put trapped you in a cell, they would take all of your things, but apparently that's not the case. They wanted, they didn't want to fight. Very convenient. <laughs> yeah. Also, you know what? Uh, Rick Ricardo is now invisible, so it's like, <laughs> yay! yay. Um, uh, this part of the game is actually pretty creepy, because you hear him a lot, and, but you can't see him. And he pops up randomly, he like fades in and out, and it makes the music super intense, like, out of nowhere. Oh, do you want to show him what, uh... Oh, yeah! Yeah, let's show you what record- with Ricardo- Ricardo's Ricordo. music. Ricardo's Ricordio. music. Ricardo's music. Ricordio. Ricordin. <laughs> Rick Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> but thankfully Huey's there like the whole time so it's like <laughs> it's really cool um all of their music has like a really cool title that actually is like it reminds you of them this one is Sly Hunter yeah and like his sounds very dramatic but like he's not like a super no. hard to yeah he's not a weird guy but anyway <laughs> The nice thing is, even though you can't see Ricardo, Huey does. That's the most important part, because Huey is the one who does all of the work in this game. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> now at this point of the game, it's kind of nice. You can actually change your cl- your costumes in the alchemy holes. Um, mm-hmm. So basically, if you don't want to wear that skimpy little hospital gown, you can change back into the clothes that you once had on before that. Or you can change into clear clothing, still without any shoes on, which is still upsetting to me. So you're like, I want my shoes. You find out at this part, you're in a water tower, which is weird. And you have to connect these two buildings together and the bridge is just gone. So you have to find a way to make the bridge come back up to connect to this other random place. So you have to get to the top of the water tower. The entire time, Ricardo just randomly comes out of nowhere because once again, he's invisible. So you're just dealing with him constantly and that music all of a sudden and then it's gone and then all of a sudden and then it's gone and there's no place to hide here. You just have to keep running until he goes away. So then at the very top is a planetarium puzzle. And the nice thing about puzzles is the enemies can't get you during puzzles. But once you complete the puzzle, it's fair game. So during the puzzles, great. They can't get you. After the puzzle is done, you're screwed. (laughs) So, mm-hmm. 
you and who you and Huey you and Huey you and Huey you and Huey, <laughs> you and Huey um, have to light up the planets one by one, which opens the way for another staircase. So basically, you step on a, a you know a glowing uh, planet. He steps on one, you step on one, he was in, and then all of them you need to be lit up, and then it opens up the staircase. So the bridge puzzle uh, at the very top of this tower, and it fixes the bridge connecting the buildings. But of course, Ricardo shows up and tells you there's nowhere else to run. Dun dun. And that, of course, his ass off is, you know, he wants your ass off and all that other stuff. Yeah. Um, so it's finally time for Ricardo's boss battle. So mm-hmm. of course, if Ricardo was still invisible, you can't see him. So basically what you do have to do, it's very strange. The top of this tower has like a bunch of holes in it. You have to send Huey through one of the many holes in the wall and he actually like comes out the top of this hole. And what you have to do is you have to make sure that Ricardo is directly underneath this hole so that when you tell Huey to go, he attacks him from above and then he falls off of this tower. But I tried so many times and that was... I'll explain that later. But anyway... It's not a hard battle, but getting it's him... It's precision. But yes, but getting this thing to line up right so that it's happy can be a pain in the butt. Mm-hmm. But anyway, he falls from his death from the tower. And you go back to the bridge, you're like, I'm gonna leave. <laughs> and uh, Huey, s- <laughs> Huey finds Rick's, like, crumpled body and just kind of, like, sits right on his face like a good boy. The best part is that just happened to me randomly. I was just outside. And yeah, that's not, I like, a cutscene or yeah, anything. I examined his body because I was kind of just like, oh, I wonder what it says. And then he just sits right on his face. <laughs> yep. And I'm just like, good boy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> So you're now in a very strange house. It's disturbing and creepy and looks literally unlivable. Like, there's, like, a couch. (laughs) Oh, God, not a couch. That's it. Like, how do you live in a house with just a couch? So you notice a a bunch of flammable boxes in the corner of one of the rooms. That's foreshadowing, my friends. Okay, so you find Lorenzo, who is confined to a very fancy wheelchair. <laughs> and mm-hmm. he, it's like a velvet couch. Yeah, it's like a velvet chair, but it's his wheelchair. He looks like the Crypt Keeper. Lorenzo looks like the Crypt Keeper. Fiona! Yeah, that's actually a really good, like... Fiona! That's really, that's literally what he sounds like. His wheelchair does not keep him from crawling after you, grudge style. It's Do you want to horrifying. This, his music? Yes, his music. His music is actually kind of cool. You're like, oh, what a decrepit old man, but he's like a freaking like, face... Face, uh, face eater. Yeah, from Alien. Yeah, face hugger. <laughs> face oh my god, <laughs> I love Alien. Yeah, he's actually really scary and fast for a crippled dude. Yep. Here we go. Beep. So just picture this like skin and bones like old guy like trying to eat your butt. <laughs> That's pretty much what it is. So what you have to do, you lure him down by the flammable boxes and you set him on fire. And he's smooshed by the rubble from the explosion. Mm-hmm. Which also opens up a new path for Fiona, which is awesome. So I left at this point to go save and use the alchemy hole. You know, you get my medallions. Use the alchemy hole. That's what they call the toilet. <laughs> The alchemy hole. I'm gonna go make some alchemy. In a alchemist room. I'm gonna go make some alchemy. <laughs> well, when you come back, guess who is missing? Oh my goodness. Um. Yeah, you enter the new area, and he returns uh, to take his revenge on your butt. Uh, no, he 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 starts crawling after you again, and you lure him onto a conveyor belt. And this time you sm- give him an even better smushing. Yes. Like, there's this giant, like, steamroller that's, like, part of the conveyor belt, and you just make, like, chocolate. You- wow. Chocolate? <laughs> Ew. Uh, I don't want any Lorenzo chocolate. You just ma- you just flatten the sucker. Yeah. <laughs> it's, like, blood and g- bones and such. Uh. And yeah. I mean, he- he's dead, right? Yep. So, now, <laughs> yep. at this point of the game, it gets kind of warpy and weird. You get separated from Huey, and you enter the Room of Eternal Taunting. It's almost like the French guy from the Monty Python and the Holy Grail movie, where he's like, 
come back and I shall taunt you a second time. <laughs> but it's more like you go into this room and this really sexy British voice is just like, oh, Fiona. Hello. Oh, you're going to hide from me, Fiona. And you're just locked in this room the whole time. He's just taunting you and telling you that you will be his and there's nowhere to run and there's nowhere to hide. And, you know, it's really cute because, like, if you try to hide, he'll be like, you think you can hide from me? It's just like, it's really cute, like, little taunting witticisms like that. And then, yeah, and then after a while, he'll be like, after a while, he's like, you will be mine, and then you can finally leave the room. Um, and then you run into Lorenzo again, who yep. apparently just won't die. He just won't die. But he transforms into young Lorenzo, or little Yachty, as, <laughs> as I call him in my notes, <laughs> and, who is much hotter, but twice as fast and very cunning. Um, but thankfully, Huey rejoins you at this exact moment. The grainy, scary-sounding puzzle room. I don't really remember this room. No, it's really weird. Like, everything looks... As soon as I went into this room, it's very, like, grainy. And, like, the music was really creepy. This is probably one of those rooms where, like, it really actually scared me. Mm -hmm. And But it's a puzzle room, which which is nice because he didn't have to worry about anybody coming to well i found well, out later he could have come if he wanted to but he didn't come um but anyway it's literally just going through the right colored doors or little yadi will get you <laughs> pretty much um yeah you're uh you have a weird birthmark that opens the door um it's called a catechist yeah i'm pretty sure it's a catechist catechist um yeah to me it looked like the horde symbol from uh <laughs> world, of warcraft. world of warcraft yeah blizzard um but yeah you you um you find a, like a staff a magical like golden staff looking thing yeah it's got with... like an alchemy symbol on it i believe mm -hmm. like the symbol for medicine or something yeah the like snakes and um it unlocks the final door little yachty shows up to kick some more butt and it's his boss battle Oh, we um, never like let's listen listen to his music real quick before we talk about his boss battle. Okay, so this is Lil Yachty's music, <laughs> or Young Lorenzo. Young Lorenzo, he's got a very. He doesn't like, look like Lil Yachty. I just thought it was funny that they both had the same initials, oh <laughs> Young my. Lorenzo and Lil Yachty. <laughs> it's very creepy. I actually really appreciate that one, though. As weird as the sounds of all of them, that one's the least scary. <laughs> that mm -hmm. one's more just like, oh, God, th this stuff's getting intense. Yep. So, okay, so this is the hardest battle so far, this boss battle. Um, young Lorenzo is fast, and you literally have to beat him to death. That is the only way you can kill him. It's not like the other ones where, like, they kind of kill themselves. Um, this one, you actually literally have to beat him, um, you, you, which I just literally sent Huey after him time and time again until he knocked Huey unconscious. And then there's, like, some stones. Because basically, it's, like, a huge room with fans and a lava pit. A literal, like, hell portal. Yeah, a literal lava pit. But there are, like, these little stones that you can kick into the lava, and, like, it makes the fire really, in the lava really intense, and it makes little fire flames on the ground, and you actually just run him into that, and it actually does quite a bit of damage. Um, yeah, and at the end of the battle, um, young Lorenzo yeets himself into the lava pit, 300 style, and he is gone. It's like, this is Sparta! Yeah, he's like smiling and laughing, and I'm like, why is he so happy he's about to yeet himself into this pit? Mm -hmm. But he's gone. Yeah. He's you just know, I forgot to mention. How you, you forgot to mention how sweaty he was before he <laughs> fell into that pit. <laughs> oh, I was going to say Debilitus was sweaty. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, well, he, young Lorenzo is very sweaty. <laughs> Great minds think alike. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, okay, so I'm sorry. Uh, the whole tower is now shaking now that you um, open that door from earthquakes. And your final menace, Flaming Lorenzo, <laughs> crawls from the lava pit <laughs> to get you. Um, yeah, it's kind of ridiculous. It's very ridiculous. So at this point, I had a very hard time with it. This is actually probably the hardest challenge in the entire game. So you have to try to stay away from Flaming Lorenzo while also dealing with the earthquakes, which basically means you have to not get touched by him. You have to try to kneel every time there's an earthquake or the the vibrations on your controller get really intense. And you'll fall over. And then a statue, like at, the, like at this point where I'm already dealing with two things that are stupid, another stupid thing happens. A statue falls and you literally have to put it back up before 
flaming Lorenzo touches you. And, like, so you literally have to get, like, at least a minute ahead of him. Otherwise, you can't get this in time. And you just gotta, you gotta <laughs> slam on that zero button, or that O mm-hmm. button. And then, <laughs> so then after that, you, f- you run to that door as fast as you can before more earthquakes happen. And flaming Lorenzo falls apart and turns into ash. Finally. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So you go through the glowing door, and you are finally done with the madness. You shakily open the front entrance to the castle, but Huey looks at you, and he goes, hmm. And you're like, <laughs> we can do this. And he calms you down, and you, you know, you put your key into the hole, and you turn it. And you're like, mm. <laughs> and it's funny because you look back at the castle after you open the entrance to the outside and Debilitus is coming out of the castle because you didn't kill him. And uh, you look at him and he looks at you and you look at him and he bows at you. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then he just, he has like this really huge pair of like shears, shears. like yeah, shears for gardening, but they look like a huge pair of scissors in my opinion, which is a cute nod to the Clock Tower series and the Scissor Walker. Um, but anyway, um, he leaves you and you and Huey leave and yeah, the literally the end of the game is Debilitus like trimming hedges. It's cute. He's just like <laughs> And yeah, that's the end of the game. I feel like for all of that work, you probably should have got a little bit more of an ending than that, but you know what? Beggars can't be choosy. Compared to the other endings, it's pretty good. So the ending I got was A, which is the first ending of four endings because it's A, B, C, and D. Um, it took me nine hours and 16 minutes to complete the game. Um, I got kind of confused at some parts, so at a certain part, I just started using a walkthrough. Honestly, when there's with so many different rooms and like so many different ways you can die in a game, I'm just like, you know what? Let's let's just do the most straightforward thing that I can do. My dog level was A, which I think is pretty good. Um, there might be an S level. Sometimes there are. I didn't have any critical Huey injuries, which I thought was weird because. During the young Lorenzo fight, he literally died. <laughs> I mean, he didn't die, but he passed he out. He got KO'd. Yeah, he got knocked out. And then the type I got was top breeder. So I assume that means that we were pretty good fr- friends, I guess. And then I unlocked the secret room in hard mode. Um, the art gallery. So the art gallery is really interesting if you want to check out uh, some like creepy and dark artwork from the game. I really appreciate it, actually, and I would love to use some of it for like... Um, reference material if I ever wanted to do my own video game because it's actually really cool art. Mm-hmm. So tell me about the character gallery, Monty. <laughs> um, it's interesting. <laughs> and bouncy? Yes. You can actually like... Oh yeah, you, yeah. you can view the character models that they used for the game. Um, and yeah, just kind of like a little museum of characters. It's pretty cool. Yeah. The music, it, it has a really great selection of music, it, but it doesn't have every different track. It doesn't really tell you what part it was used in. Some of them you can under, like you can get, like it was called Debilitus or Lorenzo. You know, then you got it. But then like there were some of them that I'm just like, I don't remember what part of the game this was used in. I really wish they would have been like, oh, this was used at the part where you were being chased by Daniela, which I already knew, but you know, something like that. Um... Movies, you can review, you can actually watch all the cinematics over again if you want to. And then there was the mini game, A Dog's Best Friend. Um, I'll talk about the mini game a little bit later. Oh. Um, and then uh, if you do hard mode, it unlocks new costumes for the baddies. Um, Huey gets a stuffed dog costume, which I would have loved to see. Um, but I can't imagine doing hard mode. I would, like, be decimated. I actually wouldn't mind trying it. <laughs> yeah, you, you, yeah. <laughs> um, Fiona gets a frog costume, aww. <laughs> Enemies are much harder and Huey can actually die. Yeah, which is interesting. The AI is much smarter and they do their special attacks more often than just the regular ones. Yes. So yeah, hard mode. Sounds fun. <laughs> <laughs> so the pros and cons and game bugs. So let's talk about the cons first. Or, yeah, the, 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 the cons first. So pretty much this game is Dog Simulator 2018, which is not a bad thing, but it's also not a good thing. It's mostly just telling Huey what to do, and while you (laughs) feebly stand there hoping that he doesn't die. I mean, that's pretty much what most of the game is. Um, Sometimes you can convince Huey to hide with you. If not, it feels like he's a dead giveaway when you're hiding, because he's literally, like, there, and the bad guys are just like, okay, I know you're somewhere around here because you're dumb dogs right here. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> also, the bad guys can climb, which is a con. I mean, yeah, it's a con. <laughs> but, I mean, at the same time, it's like you weren't expecting it. And it's something that's unnecessary. But at the same time, kind of freaked me out when it first happened. Um, there are not many hiding places. Um, and then, like, another cool thing about the AI is that the enemies will actually learn your hiding places. Um, so if you try to, say, for instance, hide in the same place twice, the second time they might not find you, but the third time for sure they're going to find you in that closet if you keep hiding in that closet. Yeah. That makes it uh, more realistic, at least. Um, even though it's annoying. Um, using the random items they give you to slow down enemies sucks. Making medallions seems random and weird. Yeah. Because it's like a billiard table, and you're just like, spinning these balls around. You're kind of just mashing that X button hoping you get something good. It literally sounds like a bunch of billiard balls, too, when it's, like, making the item. It's weird. Yeah. So it's hard to tell when the coast is actually clear. So, like, when you're hiding from an enemy, it'll just be like, coast clear. And it's not actually always that case. Like, for instance, you're in this gigantic room hiding, and there's only one way out, but the character keeps just going to a different room and closing the door, you know they're going to come back out that one door if there's no other exit. So what I found out is that even though it says Coast Clear, don't leave. Wait until you can hear the music again, the atmosphere. You just want to hear that before you actually leave. Otherwise, you know, two seconds later, he will be growling again because that freaking, like, enemy is going to be coming back after you. Mm-hmm. I could never convince Daniela to use a damned mirror. Like, I could never get her to use that as a distraction. I don't know if she had to be, like, right in front of it and I had to open her right in her freaking face. But I went, went her go by, but made her go by almost every mirror in that damn freaking castle. And I, for the life of me, could not get her to actually freak out at one. <laughs> there, there. It's okay. <laughs> but, like, another annoying thing she does is um, she also closes doors behind you. Because she's a maid. She's just like, must close door. Uh, he just so expensive in the winter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Daniela closes all of her doors behind her and behind you. So you'll try to run through that door and you'll be like, I didn't shut this damn door. <laughs> and you're just like, Daniela, Daniela. So some hiding spots aren't obvious. Like there's a couple parts in the walkthrough where it's like, there's a bush you can hide in. I cannot for the life of me tell which freaking bush they were talking about because there was 30 freaking bushes. <laughs> and I mean, I could go up to all of them while I'm running around, but Ricardo's chasing me and I ain't got time for that. Wasn't the actual bush like really small, like the size of a garbage can no, or something? No, there was like a random bush inside of Lorenzo's house that you could oh. hide in. And I don't know why, but there was. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah. Another con, uh, is, uh, you can hurt Huey, because, like, the only real attack you have is that ninja kick. Yeah, you can just kick things. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, <laughs> Huey's one of them. Yeah. Uh, panicking sucks. You can't use items to calm yourself when you're in panic mode. You other have to, than, like, go ahead. Other than that, I mean, using items is fine. It's just, like, that one time when you're freaking the freak out, you just can't. Don't you, you use like a, like a sink to like wash your face, right? Yeah, your status can be restored using that as well, but you can't when you're panicking either. That's true. You can't actually use any items when you're panicking. You can't even, if the character is right behind you, you can't even hide. Yeah, no, that makes sense. The boss battle with Ricardo sounds very simple, but it took forever to get Huey to actually attack him from the hole because they're like going by super quickly. Yeah, and the mini game that they had was terrible. I actually tried playing it just last night, and it was just like, it's basically they just want, you play as Huey, it's called, um, I think it's a dog's best friend or something like that, or, um, yeah, 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 that's what it's called. Yeah, a dog's best friend, and, um, or man's best friend, it was something like that. Um, but anyway, basically all you gotta do is you gotta escort Fiona from, you know, you know, point A to point B, and she can't die, or you can't die, otherwise it's game over. But she's supposed to come to you when you bark. There were so many times where I actually knocked Debilitus unconscious in my game, and I barked to get her to come by me, and she would just run away. And I'm like, this this dude is on the floor, dead, or not dead, but unconscious, and I need you to follow me, and she just wouldn't. And after like a half an hour of trying, I just gave up. I tried like three different times, and I was just like, you know what? I'm not getting anywhere. I'm not going to keep doing this. So let's talk about the pros. What's your favorite pro? (laughs) My favorite pro? My favorite pro or the one that's in order? Mm. (laughs) 
the first one. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, then in that case, my favorite pro is that you can karate kick the doors down. <laughs> Ooh, that was really fun. I, instead of accidentally pressing the button to open the doors, I found myself accidentally karate kicking doors open multiple times. <laughs> or karate kicking your dog through the door. <laughs> <laughs> no! I never did that! So there's this part where you have to get, like, these moths are all hanging around this door, so to get the moths to go away, you have to get, like, fresh flowers, which is kind of cool. Um, so you send Huey to go get them, and then you actually have to put them in a vase. That part was actually really cool. I was talking about this a little bit before, but it's kind of the pretty, like, atmosphere in this game that really draws you to its, like, intrigue. It's so good. So good. Um, you can craft, um, and also find, like, chicken jerky that you can feed to Huey, which is actually pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Door transitions are awesome. They kind of fade in and out, which I talked a little bit about. Um, the atmosphere is amazing! The whispers and the music and the baddies are all perfect. They really are. They really are in all of their ways. The rooms are all very creative and interesting. I swear to God, there's one part in this game where there's, like, a mammoth. Just, like, a mammoth, like, trunk that you just walk over and his face is, like, coming out of a wall. And it's just, like, who thought of this? I don't know how or where or why, but, like, it's awesome, and well, I need more mammoth heads in my games. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then there was another part where there was, like, a saber-toothed tiger statue or something like that in a room, and Huey actually would, like, bow down to it and just kind of, like, stare at it. It was really cute. There's, um, there's also a lot of items in the game, which is nice. Yes. You never feel like you're, like, out of items, which is nice. The AI is very smart. Like I said before, if you hide in the same place more than twice, you're definitely going to be found in that one spot. Dying is fabulous! It says Acta est fabula, and that means the play is over in Latin. That's yeah. like the the death screen. Yeah, it's kind of, yeah, it's a game over basically. But yeah, it's really creepy looking and yeah. It, it's cool that it's called the play is over, or that it says the play is over. I try to be all artsy. Yes, Latin-y. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. So you use a sundial to save in the forest instead of clocks. I found that kind of clever, because technically still, a sundial is a clock. It's yeah. still a clock. Yeah. Um, the controls, for the most part, are pretty simple, but the hardest part is remembering the dog controls. Yeah, I would, like, leave for a couple of days and then come back to the game, and then I'd be like, how do I tell him to attack people again? And, and I you're just, just like, good boy, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for just sitting there while I die. Good boy. I'm glad Debilitus is beating me up. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> um, you found out that some items are red herring and they serve no purpose. Yep. Yep. The graphics are beautiful. The story is awesome. The characters are super interesting. Um, the cutscene before you fight Danielle, I thought this was kind of funny, is called Cat Fight. And after you kill her, it's called Shish Kebab. <laughs> <laughs> A little insensitive, but it's hilarious. Um,. Oh, yeah, and you can also unlock a Texas cowgirl costume that looks like a bikini with chaps and a hat. And she has a um, a gun that she can actually use in the game that's part of the costume, so it's pretty cool. And then there's another costume you unlock when you just do normal mode. It's called Illegal in Some States, and it looks very dominatrix, and you use a whip to attack. <laughs> and I'm just like, okay, we already <laughs> sexualized this game to the extreme. Why do the costumes have to be so dang tiny? Pretty much. But the best part is that Huey gets a German Shepherd skin unlocked. So he looks like he's a white shepherd, but it's cool that you can unlock like an like the you know German Shepherd skin too. Mm-hmm. A little creativity. Yeah. But S- yeah. Monty, who's your favorite character in this whole game? <sighs> Huey. <laughs> I don't know. Like Daniela was pretty cool, but like, I don't know. Huey was adorable. And like the only character that wasn't like even a little bit crazy. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, since you're saying Huey, I'm going to go ahead and say Daniela. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Daniela like is Daniela. probably my favorite character in the game. I've thought about cosplaying as her a couple different times, and I, I think that would be awesome if one day I could do Daniela. Mm-hmm. That would be awesome. Mm-hmm. But anyway, yeah, she's her, <laughs> her just like, I've never seen such a character in a game that's given me so many, like, like disturbing, like, feelings before. And, like, she's just, like, she's just chaotic, and I she's love it. She's very awesome, yeah. Yeah. Um, So let's talk about the different enemies and the characters. We'll go over them briefly because we talked quite a bit about all of them. Mm -hmm. So Fiona, she is the ever, (laughs) ever damsel in distress (laughs) of this, like, Yeah, she doesn't really do anything besides have the Azoth 
And like, she does puzzles, but she needs Huey for that too. So it's not like she does them alone. Yeah. So yeah, she's you know she's really pretty. Like we were saying, she's probably like early twenties. Yeah, she's gorgeous. Yeah, she's yeah. I can see why all of these really creepy, depressing people want her. <laughs> like it's as weird as it sounds. Mm. The only one that's not creepy is I mean the only one that's not creepy looking is young Lorenzo. <laughs> huh, I mean he's yeah. He's cool. Mm-hmm. And then Huey. Um, there's so much that you can do with Huey. He's, like Monty said, one of the best characters in the game because... He's a good boy. Well, and he's got so much charisma to him, and he's actually got, like, a really cool, like, backstory and all this other stuff. Not really so much a backstory as, like, he has all these different things that you can do with him. Like, for instance, you can play ball with Huey if you want. You can feed him. You can discipline him. You can, um, you know, he, I mean, he grabs items for you. He just, he literally does everything. It's pretty amazing. Mm. Um, Debilitus is pretty much a giant ogre. He looks kind of like Quasimodo, like we were talking about before. Like, like a, like a, uh, never mind. I was gonna say, like, like Shrek if he was white, but... (laughs) (laughs) What? (laughs) I mean, yeah, I guess to a certain... If he was white in color, you mean, instead of green. And also, yeah, (laughs) not charismatic at all, just like, (laughs) duh. He didn't really say much, except my darling. Get out of my swamp. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. Anyway. Um, but yeah, I mean, the pro- the thing that's actually I, I appreciate about Debilitus is that he is not actually a bad guy. He's just misunderstood. He just wants to actually, like, play and have fun. So but is Shrek. But it comes out as, like, this intense anger because people being scared of him makes him upset. And, like, he's basically just like a little child in, like, a giant's body. Pretty much. Um, Daniela, on the other hand, is the complete opposite. She just wants to kill. And like that, I gotta give but her props for. <laughs> she also wants to do her job. Yeah. Which is also She's also good. very dedicated to the maid work. Mm-hmm. Which I, you know, we gotta give her some props for. She's, like I said, like we said before, one of the coolest villains that I've ever seen in a video game. And, I mean, she's, she's literally glorious in her own, like, creepy, evil, maniacal way. Mm-hmm. Luminescence are stupid. I already talked about how much of a pain in the butt they are and how literally they're just there to make you panic when you don't need it. Like At the exact moments that you do not need to panic, they're there. <laughs> yep. <laughs> the homunculus. Um, the homunculi don't really do a whole lot. Um, they kind of just are there to creep you out and make you feel disturbed more than anything. Mm-hmm. Why don't you talk about football babies a little bit, Monty? <laughs> <laughs> the failures. Yep, that's literally all they are. They just kind of, like, grab your ankles, and then when you... You just have to, like, kick them once, and then they'll curl up and just, like, evaporate. Well, it's crazy, because when they, like, grab onto you, they, like, scream, and it really freaks out your character. So if you don't make Huey, or you don't kick them in time, or you don't make Huey get at them, it can actually cause you to panic, or send one of these stupid idiots after you. Mm -hmm. Ricardo. Um, Most of the time, he's, like, wearing, like, a monk outfit, like a hood. You can't even see him. And he looks really cool until he takes it off. Yeah. (laughs) And then he's just like, And he's, like I said, he's got a really cool voice, too. But the fact that he looks exactly like her father and wants to impregnate her is just so gross on so many levels. He wants to impregnate her with himself. Because he's a clone. He wants to be reborn with her Azoth. That's literally everybody's goal, except Daniela. She just wants her Azoth and thinks that she can get it if she tears her apart. Which is so gross, but also really clever. I mean, I mean, what else? (laughs) Lorenzo. Let's talk a little bit about Lorenzo. So Lorenzo is literally in the same boat as Ricardo, except Lorenzo created Ugo And Ricardo. The difference between Ugo and Ricardo is that Ugo decided that he was going to fall in love and he ended up leaving because he fell in love with a woman and Fiona was born out of that love. Um, He's like the mastermind. Yeah. And I mean, apparently some guy named um, Ariolus, he is actually like the reason that this exists, like all this alchemy and the homunculi and like these people exist because of Ariolus. He's their god, I guess, Mm. in a certain sense. Um, But yeah, Lorenzo is not a threat. It's young Lorenzo who's the actual threat, who's actually very dapper and cute. He looks like the redhead, the built redhead of every anime. 
<laughs> yep, the angry, angsty boy. Yes, he, <laughs> that's what I love about him the most. And he's got, like, that long red hair, and he's like, mm. You know what I love? I'm. He's like, you cur every time that... The, <laughs> Menace, meddlesome cur. Meddlesome cur every my, time that <laughs> he gets attacked. My personal favorite is... Uh, and apparently he runs after you by putting his hands behind his back, like he's, like, some, like... Buddhist monk. It's really, it's actually really cute. Anyway, I, I, Young Lorenzo is actually one of the best parts of the game, but he's so such a, such a small part of the game. I really wish we could add a little bit more Young Lorenzo. And then Flaming Lorenzo, the one we get the very least amount of time with, which I'm okay because if he touches you once, you will die. That's why that part with the earthquakes and the statue is so freaking infuriating. I had to do it like three separate times to get it timed perfect. One of my favorite parts was how his voice, Flaming Lorenzo's voice, is exactly like Sexy Lorenzo, but, like, all raspy, like his throat is, like, burnt up, and, yeah, I thought that was cool. <laughs> it is really cool. And, of course, Flaming Lorenzo was actually called the Lord of Flames, but I don't really know what he's the Lord of, in my opinion. He's mostly just the Lord of being in my way. <laughs> So, is it for children? Who would you recommend play this? It is rated M for a very good reason. It is definitely not for kids. There is violence and blood. Um, there's a lot of sexual themes. Um, it's not like the language is too terribly bad in the game. Um, I mean, other than, like I said, the sexual themes are way worse than the language actually is. Um, the, but the, it's just, there's a lot of sexual themes. That's why I'm saying this is definitely not for kids. I played it at 15 years old when I actually bought the game myself at a, at a, at a store. And yeah, I actually bought it at Mojo's, as crazy as it sounds. And yeah, I thought it was a, the, one of the coolest games ever. Um, and it's really scary. So I could see, like, a kid try to play it and just be, like, so freaked out at the music that they just wouldn't be able to really play it. So Monty... What do you rate this game? <sighs> yeah, this um, is really hard for me. I'm trying to think right now on the spot. I don't even have an idea of what I want to give it in my head. Probably like a... Se I, I have to give it a, over like at least a 7 or 8 out of 10. Because like, probably 7. Just because the animation is so great. And like, for the, for the time, mm -hmm. you know, like... Yeah. I don't know. I just felt like a lot of... It, it was very well... Not only was the animation really cool, but, like, all of the shots were very well staged. And it was just pleasing. But as far as the game itself, I would have probably gotten really bored, like, most of the way through and just been like, all right, you know? Because, <laughs> like, I don't know. I tend to have, like... Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. It's It's... It's... It's a good game, so 7 out of 8. Or 7 out of 8. <laughs> wow. 7 or 8 out of 10. <laughs> for okay. sure. Well, like, if you had to choose between 7 or 8, what would you give it? 7. 7? Okay. I'm going to go ahead and do a 9 out of 10. Um, the more that I talk about this game, the more I just, like, fall in love with it. And I think describing, like, all the different parts and our favorite parts, it's just, there's just so much to love about this game. And, like, as weird as it sounds, the creepy and, like, the creepier and the more disturbing a game is, the more that I'm drawn to it and the more that I love it because it's just, like, they're taking something that most people don't even want to look at and they're making it a thing and it's, like... Sometimes I think these things need to be, like, exacerbated to, like, show what it's like for people in these situations. Like, for example, it kind of show, kind of shines a light on, like, sexual abuse and, like, actual abuse, considering how abusive everybody is to Fiona and how, like, sexually driven they are towards her, even the maid. Like, it's just interesting. It highlights all of those things that we don't like, and it tries to, like, you know, show people that... What this is the signs of these things. <laughs> it's not that hard to tell. <laughs> but anyway, I digress. Yes, nine out of ten for sure I would give this game. Would you pay a hundred dollars for this game? Probably not. I would find it in a Gaylord for free. <laughs> <laughs> it's not free. But I would yeah, I mean I would much rather like get it from a friend buy it used um, at an actual store or at a rummage sale flea market thrift stores you can find some insane stuff at these places sometimes um, but I know it's a pretty rare game and hard to find these days so you might just end up going to the internet anyway I'm sure on eBay sometimes people sell these games for way cheaper because they don't know what they are so it's just kind of one of those things where it's like find the best best deal you can on this the game. best the be <laughs> find the best deal you can yeah. <laughs> 
Um, and then um, my question, or actually our question to all of you out there, what was the first scary movie you saw? What was the first scary movie you saw, Monty? Okay, so if you want to get technical, the very first scary movie I saw was, um, uh, I, I think it was it was Return of the Body Snatchers. Okay. I'm pretty sure that's what it was called, but I actually, I remember watching it as a little kid and then not knowing what the movie was, <laughs> and then actually I looked it up, like, years later and was like, oh, it was that one, and I just, like, yeah, I thought it was really creepy. Like, when the aliens leave their body, they just kind of get all shriveled and creepy, mm-hmm. um, and, uh, yeah, <laughs> it was a really old one, but the first, um, yeah, that, that was the movie that, the first horror movie that I saw. That's pretty cool. The, the earliest one. I, I don't that know I can if remember. I ever saw any of the Body Snatchers movies, but that sounds really cool. Um, I think the first one that I saw, and I'm not 100 percent sure on this because I saw a lot of horror movies as a kid, but I'm pretty sure it was Night of the Living Dead. And Night of the Living Dead is one of those, you know, the ones like, hey, this is the first horror movie I saw. That's usually what most people say, or you know, Dawn of the Dead or something like that. I thought it was super creepy. Like, even though it's in black and white when the zombies are, like, eating the guts and the flesh of the people, I was so disturbed as a child. I have such a hard time with scary movies. I can do scary video games until the end of the night, but I couldn't... Uh, scary movies, like, anytime someone's eating or puking or blood, it's just is, really hard for me. Do you think it's just because, like, it seems more real in a movie? Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I always try to tell myself, it's like, oh yeah, that's just latex and like fake blood and stuff like that. But it's so hard sometimes but because it a, looks so realistic. But with a game, it's like literally animated. Well, yeah, with a game, it's animated. <laughs> animated stuff doesn't bug me as much as like real life stuff, which, you know, to be told, it's something someone made instead of something someone is doing. Um, but yeah, I think that's what bothers me the most. And like in video games, you know, when a zombie, like, throws up or there's blood or, like, something like that, it's not... It does just doesn't look as realistic. And I think that's where I'm, like, able to cut off, like, realism from, like, creativity and stuff like that. But, but yeah. it's still awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and Night of the Living Dead is a great, great movie. But anyway, yeah. Um, so, of course, once again, what is the first scary movie you saw? Feel free to answer on Facebook. You can message us on Twitter. You can direct message or just comment on this video on YouTube. Um, I am at Mojo Ami on Twitter. And I'm at Monty Rex with two X's. Yep. Or feel free to email us your answer to at Mojo Gaming Podcast at gmail.com. Uh, um, actor S. Fabula. <laughs>